Most people only see the results of the years of hard work actors spend honing their craft, completely disregarding the effort involved. It's essential for critics to understand the process used in today's film industry, especially when it's a controversial one. Today, we'll be taking a look at one such method, known as method acting. Method acting is when an actor needs to connect to the character they play to better understand where they come from. Where this gets controversial is often the actor refuses to break character and continues to act like they are this character. This might include refusing to respond unless they're called the character's name, or in much worse situations, refusing to act like a normal person even when the camera's not rolling. For example, a character playing an ape-like creature might refuse to sit or eat normally, causing a problem for those on set with them. Now, you might think this kind of thing seems silly and pointless, right? Well, unfortunately, this seems to be one of the most dominant forms of acting. 35% of award-winning actors admit to using method acting. God only knows how many use this technique without any award wins. In total, there are five different types of acting, but method draws the most ire as it's the only one that seems to have a negative effect on actions or mental health. So why would someone decide to use method acting? And the Oscar goes to Christian Bale, Daniel Day-Lewis, Heath Ledger, Hilary Swank, Jared Leto, Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, because it actually works. In order to fully understand the importance of method acting, you need to first understand its origin. Method acting was brought to the US by Lee Strasberg in the 1930s, basing his technique on that of Stanislavski. Try saying that name five times fast. The Stanislavski system is where various techniques are combined to allow an actor to create believable characters to bring to life. This system puts the actor in the mind of the character, so to speak. Strasberg described it as such. Essentially, the actor acts as a fiction, a dream. In life, the stimuli to which we respond are always real. The actor must constantly respond to the stimuli that are imaginary. And yet this must happen, not only just as it happens in life, but also actually more fully and more expressively. Although the actor can do things in life quite easily, when he has to do the same thing on the stage under fictitious conditions, he has difficulty because he is not equipped as a human being merely to play act at imitating life. He must somehow believe. He must somehow be able to convince himself of the rightness of what he is doing in order to do things fully on stage. So that's probably a bit much to digest, right? Let me break it down a little. The whole idea of Lee's technique is to make playing the character a habit in the actor's life so it feels natural on screen. And honestly, this doesn't seem like a terrible idea on paper. Where the problem comes in is when an actor refuses to stop and literally blends the idea of the character with the idea of themselves. When someone refers to the idea of I don't know where I end and the character begins, it sounds like a neat thing to say, but this can be very damaging to the person's psyche. Look at Jim Carrey as an example of this. When he played Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon, he went full method for the role, living as Andy did and pretending to be Andy. This led him to give a stellar performance, but even now, years later, he admits that he irrevocably changed himself in the process. Doesn't exactly sound like the healthiest thing in the world, huh? You need to keep grounded, I think, in, in reality. And that's not to say that you don't lose yourself for the time between action and cut, but I think the rest of it is absolute pretentious nonsense. And that's not even going into the trouble method acting can cause on a set. Method actors can be notoriously difficult to direct, as often the director has to give notes for performance adjustment. But if an actor thinks they are the character, why would they listen to feedback on how they should act? You certainly wouldn't do so in your everyday life, would you? There is also the issue of other actors. There are numerous stories about method actors causing problems on set by acting like their characters in ways that are mostly just annoying to those around them. Jared has gone full Joker. Jared, he went, he went full Joker, you know? And the rule generally is never go full Joker. But uh, yeah, there were many instances where I didn't know what to expect with Jared. People use condoms. Yeah, he said use condoms and he know sticky Playboy magazines. 
Method acting isn't necessarily a bad thing on its own, but it definitely has its downsides. As I mentioned earlier, it can affect someone's psyche. Studies have shown that Lee's system can be very draining. Since method acting connects closely with raw emotions, it can cause mental fatigue, especially over a long period of time. For instance, imagine experiencing the emotions of two entirely different human beings, yourself and the character you play. Just thinking about it is draining. But actors that rely on Lee's system use deep acting to avoid this natural phenomenon. Deep acting is when the person performing the emotion attempts to change their emotional state to conform to the emotion that they're displaying. Many people like to think of it as an off switch for your true self. Sometimes when you're working with people who invest like that, it doesn't feel like they're having a good time. It's a job of, of, of playing make-believe. Uh, and you do it effectively and you do it uh, in a way that's not harmful to you because it's a safe space. Unfortunately, deep acting, a subcategory of method acting, is predominantly used for characters that reflect negativity or increase the difficulty of the lives of the people around them. For example, Jared Leto, who played Michael Morbius in the movie Morbius, reportedly used crutches to get around on set, setting back the shooting times by more than 45 minutes each day, which, I don't know about you, probably wasn't worth it. Another example is Heath Ledger as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Wanting to be under the psychotic mindset of the Joker, Ledger locked himself in a hotel room for a month. He spent his time there writing in a diary and practicing vocal tones to fully immerse himself in the role. This definitely had psychological effects on his mental health, but he is undoubtedly the best Joker we've seen on the big screen. One of the worst examples is Adrian Brody. Brody auditioned for the part of Vladislav Spielman, the main character in the movie The Pianist. The total number of applicants for this role was over 1,400. In order to win the role, Adrian found it necessary to completely change his life. He gave up his apartment, sold his car, broke up with his girlfriend, and lost 30 pounds to familiarize himself with Spielman's experiences during the Holocaust. Jaw-dropping stuff. Notable actors are intensely selective with which characters they method act for. I mean, there wouldn't be any negative effects if method acting was used for wholesome characters like Eloise Bridgerton or Mr. Miyagi from The Karate Kid, or Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. Honestly, method acting for a kind-hearted character would just make you a better person. Yet, people rarely do it. Maybe method acting isn't about getting the feel of a character, but about justifying bad behavior. I always say about people who do method acting, you only ever see people doing the method when they're playing an asshole. American author Brett Easton Ellis's input on methodized acting supports the idea that it's derogatory towards the movie-making environment, saying, writing a novel is not method acting, and yet I find it easy to step out of it at cocktail hour. Essentially, Ellis is saying method acting should not consume the actor's life and change who they are in real life, because writers do not mimic the life of their characters just to show the accuracy in emotional nuances. Imagine J.K. Rowling or Rick Riordan impersonating Harry Potter or Percy Jackson just so they can understand their fictional dilemmas. This absurdity justifies Ellis's point of the lack of relevance of method acting, as writers do not do this, yet millions of people flock to bookstores to buy their books. Samuel L. Jackson revealed in a Screen Rant article about method acting that you're supposed to be able to safely come into this space, work and give emotionally, and not be harmed by it. He also said, it's a job of playing make-believe. You do it effectively and you do it in a way that's not harmful to you because it's a safe space. He believes the job of the actor is to not damage the process and the relationship building in the filmmaking industry. Johnny Depp, who uses method acting, would disagree, saying, there are these mythic unicorny tales of method acting, but Marlon wanted to have a good time. For context, Marlon Brando was an actor who used method acting in the 1950s to early 2000s. During his time, method acting was seen as sick and schizophrenic by many. In a way, Brando rebranded this idea and made it popular and acceptable through his achievements. Johnny Depp was relating to this, trying to say that the derogatory connotation toward method acting is overblown. There is some truth to this, as today's media loves to highlight the negatives of life in general, and speak very little about the good things going on. At the end of the day, 
Method acting is up to the actor to choose if they want to use it or not. Some people embrace it for a chance at success in today's brutal film industry. But the dangers are undeniable, from destroying connections with directors and colleagues to personal mental health. The selective nature of actors who use this method put it in a bad light, making it extremely controversial. To any of you who see yourself as an aspiring actor, I suggest you try and use method acting for loving characters, so you can use them to better yourself and build relationships in your career as an actor. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time on the channel.